What are two of the hottest things going on in the healthcare world these days? Social determinants of health for population of health is a huge one. And geoanalytics is also a huge one. What better way to tie them together than to use geoanalytics and social determinants of health and then start mapping our patients? Now we can figure out who our patients are, learn about where they live and understand them a little bit more than just trying to plot a point on the screen to see where they, they live. So we're going to go ahead and go through that together. Hopefully in the next 10 or 15 minutes, I can go from start to stop and put that data on a screen for you. A number of publicly available sites, one of the ones that I really love is svi.cdc.gov. It gives me a whole bunch of social vulnerability index data. Documentation out there that you can read on it. We're going to kind of skip through some of this and pull it down. Numbers of ways that they can give this to you. They can give this to you at the county level, um, or they can give this to you at the census tract level. So this gets all the way down to census tract, lower than zip codes, um, and we can get to that data. We can pull a shape file. You may not understand what a shape file is yet, but if you've been doing any kind of geo analytics. Um, with or without ClickSense for a while, you, you understand what these shape files are. And I'm going to give you a little bit of background as we go through this. I could pull this down at a shape file level or a CSV level. Maybe I just want data. If I pulled it down at the county level, I would likely only pull down the CSV, the text file definitions of that, because I can, in my system, already map counties. We do not in geoanalytics have census tracts mapped. We've got to provide that data. So this is a perfect time for me to go through an example of just pulling a publicly available ESRI shape file and then reading that information right into ClickSense along with the data behind that map. Um, and so that's what we're going to do. I'm just going to say, hey, I want you to download that Georgia zip. And so I'm going to bring this up for you and show you what this would look like. So in my downloads, I now have a Georgia.zip file that has several different files. You are not going to understand what all these are. You don't need to. I'm going to show you one particular thing here. There's a project file out there. And what this does is it tells me how this was geocoded, how the coordinates work, and how it should be mapped. You might be thinking, what in the world do I need that for? Well, I'm not sure if you are aware of this. It's kind of kind of recent technology that's let us see that the world is not flat. We look at maps all the time. If you were old like me, you used to unfold maps. It, it's two-dimensional. The world isn't flat, and guess what? Here's another breaking story. The world isn't round either. It's not a perfect sphere. Um, there, there's differences. And over time, how we've now decided how to plot points from a not quite round, we're ever be continuing to understand its shape, um, to flat has changed over time. So there's been different ways to plot this stuff. One of the common ones, um, these are a couple of the common ones. One of those that was in that .prj file that I showed you was, was this definition, this NAD83 format. And so by looking at that project file, it's going to tell you what format this is in. Um, and this site is a, is a good one just to look and get you some understanding. Hey, how has this changed over time? This is an, a very interesting um, science if you get that far into it, and you may or may not. One of the other things to know was that one of our big coordinate systems is the European Petroleum Survey Group. This stuff was formed, um, and they mapped the world based on these coordinates. So, um, interesting tidbits, because I always try to give you a little bit of history. 
Here's the important part for what I'm going to end up showing you. There's a reference site called spatialreference.org that I can go through and I've got to tell it then, hey, the shape file I've pulled from this public source tells me it's NAD83. How do those coordinates map? What can I do to map those um, with something? Because I'm not using a CAN mapping service. I'm going to be giving it polygon areas. I need to know how do those relate to my two-dimensional surface. And so I search for this, and it tells me, hey, if you're going to use this pretty generically, um, I'm going to use this EPSG 4269 format. Don't freak out about this stuff. I'm going to get more complete documentation online and print. I just wanted to give you a little bit of history. We're taking a publicly available source. We need to know how it created this shape file so that I can reverse engineer that. These sites just let you know a little bit about how the, what, what the coding systems are if you care. That site lets me know how to reverse engineer this. This is one of the most common so we can use this all the time. I'm going to come into ClickSense now. I want to take that shape file, zip file, and I want to bring that in and actually be able to map this stuff on the fly now. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new connection. Um, I'm going to tell it, hey, I want my IWO Geo Analytics connector. I do not want to go to the mapping server that's global. I'm going to use my local GeoAnalytics Plus in this particular instance. Because what I want to do is I want to be able to read my local geography file. And so I'm going to test this connection here. I'm going to save that connection. And now I've got a brand new connection. And I wanted to go really from start to stop with you. Um, so that you would see that there's no bells and whistles. I'm not hiding anything up my sleeve. ClickSense can literally bring in publicly available data sources, including mapping, along with the data and the geography behind it. I'm going to say, hey, I'd like to go ahead and use this. I'm not going to look at any of the analytics functions that I've been showing in some of my other videos. I'm going to load data. I'm going to be loading my type that I'm going to do is a file-based geography data set here. And so now here's the one part that's, that is a little bit interesting. It's asking for a URL. If you're using your, um, if you're using this and you're, you could point to a public URL if there was a, a file. In this case, I've downloaded it and I want it local. So I'm going to have to tell it, hey, this is a local file. So it's file, colon, and three slashes. And so that's just the syntax you would use. If you're going to point to a local file rather than an HTTPS or HTTP website, that's what you do. File, colon, slash, slash, slash. I'm going to give it my file name. C slash users, DRR, downloads, georgia.zip. That is not going to be the path for your downloads, obviously. The file type for this is an Esri shapefile. This is a common thing. I get that most of you are in healthcare um, and maybe you're just getting into geoanalytics. This is very common. You'll learn these terms as we go. And now this CRS, this is what's the coding standard for this? How, how, do the, how are these coordinates, how does this coordinate system work? This is where we're going to use this EPSG 4269. As you get familiar with this stuff, again, you'll figure all these things out. You understand, all I did was look that up. The file itself told me, hey, here's how I'm coded. I need to know what system was used. So I'm going to tell it to go ahead and do that. I could have used auto. It might have figured something out. Um, now I'm going to say, hey, I want this data set. You'll see it's giving me my low-level trapped information as well as all of these wonderful social determinants of health that I can now use. I'll, all I have to do here is say insert script. I've now processed that zip file into ClickSense um, and I can go ahead and load this data now. And it's brought back here 1966 different census tracts 
along with the data behind them. I'm going to go into my application. You'll see just for time, I already had this application created. There's nothing here. I'm not hiding any sheets. This is it. This is all I've got. There, there's nothing there. And I need to start looking at this data. One of the things I want to show you, I'm going to just put a quick table on the screen here. All I'm going to do is say, hey, I want to see this GOID thing. Um, and I want to start looking at some of these values. Um, maybe I want to see the area in square miles. Maybe I want to see one of these fields like what's the number of people who are aged 17 or under. And the other field that I want to show you is geometry. There's a field called geometry here. And if you watched any of my videos, these are the polygons, the definitions for coordinates, what forms the shape for this census tract. And so that's important for us to know that data is all pulled, but I've got the ge I've got the geography as well as the data itself. Now I want to go ahead and map this stuff. So I'm going to go to my extensions. I'm just going to put in IDEVIO map on my screen here. As always, I just leave the map blank. I'm going to add a layer here for geography. My dimension can just be any unique field. I don't care what that really is. It's the locations that I care about. If you remember from before, we've got to give it our geography here. We could do Latin long, or in this case, because I'm not a point map, I'm, a lay, I'm an area layer. I'm going to give it this geometry field. And so I'm going to give it that geometry, and it creates the map, and I see all my census tracts for the state of... Some are missing. Oh, man, this is a really bad example. Well, now, wait a second. I've got this little warning icon here. I wonder what this error means. Hey, click dork. You're only showing 1,000 objects out of the 1,966 that you loaded, you might want to change your layer settings to enable more objects. Oh, oh, oh. Maybe I I sure do. The default, just so you know, which is usually a reasonable size, is a thousand. I've got 1966 of them. Maybe I want to show 1950 of them instead. And so I create 19 or 50 of them, and I'm missing a few. Oh, yeah, I still got this air. Hey, you're showing 1950 out of 1966. You might want to make it bigger. Okay, let me just go ahead and make it 2,000. And then guess what? Now I'm showing all of my census tracts. I've got it all just colored one way. One of the beauties of the the visualization aspect for geo mapping is that maybe I want to color this by something. Numbers of things we could color things by. I'm going to go very quickly and just say, hey, let me go ahead and color it based on this EH17 field. I want you to just take this value and show me the color each one of these census tracts based on how, ma how many people are 17 or under. And so all I'm going to do is enter that field in there. And now I've got my map colored based on that. As with anything in ClickSense, I could provide list box and do formulas to do these calculations. We could create measures. Doesn't really matter. All I want you to see is within 15 minutes, we took a publicly available shape file that's coded with data. We've read that data in, we're able to visualize it with our geoanalytics, and we're able to color it based on geoanalytics. Our next step clearly would be let's shrink that up and add a point layer that's going to start showing maybe our patients or our locations. Maybe as I zoom into here, if I were a children's hospital, I might be thinking, gee, I think I'll build a children's hospital in the middle of nowhere where there's five kids under the age of 17. Or maybe 
I want my locations to be where I've got these really big clusters of children in those age groups. Does that make sense? If I'm building nursing homes or long-term care facilities, maybe I'd want to color this map based on folks who are over 65. Hopefully that kind of thing makes sense. The beauty is we can take these social determinants of health and in no time start adding that in to our analytical applications and then plot our particular patient data on top of it with point layers, um, however we may choose to do that. Hope you've enjoyed um, this quick walk down social determinants of health.